If ever we're allowed to travel again after this lockdown, I want to go to an archaeological site in southern Italy, just outside Naples. And there I hope to find the ruins of the ancient town of Cunai, founded by Greek invaders 800 years before the time of Jesus. The Greeks, of course, just like the Romans, worshipped many different gods. And you only have to go to the British Museum in London to see the many wonderful marble statues which they made of those gods. My favourite statue is from the Temple of Priscilla, the Catacombs of Priscilla in Rome, and it's called the Shepherd of Hermas. It depicts a boy carrying a sheep on his shoulders. In the first three centuries of Christianity, the followers of Jesus didn't dare to make crosses or pictures or images of him. One reason for that was that these were times of persecution and the Christians were afraid of giving themselves away. Another reason was that the face of Jesus was such a sacred thing that no human hand could capture it. So these early Christians relied on signs and symbols like fish and deer and running streams. And in that catacomb of Priscilla in Rome, they painted on the wall a copy of the statue of the boy shepherd of Hermas. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. This fourth Sunday of Easter is lovingly known as Good Shepherd Sunday. This is one of the most powerful images Jesus gives of himself in the gospel. Perhaps we have romanticized that image too much. And perhaps we don't understand how controversial a description of his leadership was to call himself a shepherd. After all, in the Old Testament of the Bible, God is continually described as shepherding his people Israel. And the great King David was a shepherd boy by profession. No wonder Jesus was seen as provocative, a troublemaker, and thrown out of his own hometown of Nazareth. How dare he call himself a shepherd? But the leadership that Jesus offers is not one of power and control. His mission is one of self-sacrificing love. He's not detached from those he cares for. Survival is not his goal. Indeed, he risks his life in search of his sheep. He risks being slaughtered, as were the lambs at Passover. Like theirs, his blood sealed the people of Israel too, not just in their escape from Egypt, but the new people of Israel, which is you and I. Behold the Lamb of God. Jesus is both the shepherd and the sacrifice. No wonder we heard St. John say in today's Gospel, Jesus told them this parable, but they failed to understand it. And so, being a good teacher, he uses another image. I am the gate of the sheepfold. My favorite religious poet, Malcolm Geit, 
puts the image of Jesus as the gate so well when he writes, not one that's gently hinged or deftly hung, not like the ones you planed at Joseph's place, not like the well-oiled openings that swing so easily for Pilate's practice pace, not like the ones that closed in Mary's face from house to house in brimming Bethlehem, not like the one that no man may assail that waits your breaking in Jerusalem, not one you made, but one you became, load-bearing, balancing, a weighted beam to bridge the gap, to bring us within reach of your high pasture, calling us by name. You lay your body down across the breach, yourself the door that opens into home. On Good Shepherd Sunday, we give thanks for the work of our priests in guiding and supporting their people in the role of caring shepherds. We pray for vocations to the priesthood in this diocese of Cardiff, and we give thanks to God for our two seminarians, Dale and Elliot, now preparing for the priesthood, and hopefully another seminarian joining them in September. Each of these men will take seriously the words of Pope Francis, that priests should be shepherds living with the smell of the sheep. But the image of the Good Shepherd is not just for priests. It isn't even a completely religious image. We only have to watch the news during this dreadful pandemic to see countless good shepherds nursing and caring for the sick often at great risk to themselves. Some of these good shepherds who have dedicated themselves to saving people from the loss of life have lost their own lives. There are good shepherds in hospitals and care homes, in schools and in our neighborhoods, carers who serve the most at risk. I think and pray today for the good shepherds called parents with a compulsion to care and love their children, often in the most difficult of circumstances. All this expressed beautifully by the Jesuit poet Jared Manny Hopkins when he says, Christ plays in a thousand places lovely in limb, lovely in eyes, not his, to the Father through the features of men's faces.